Hi folks and welcome to our midweek prayer video. You'll have been hearing the news uh, today uh, on Wednesday, if you're watching today, that Northern Ireland is facing greater restrictions over the coming weeks. More than ever, we need to be praying for our country, our society, for people who are suffering from COVID, for people who are vulnerable, for the NHS, for people worrying about jobs and income, for our mental health, for those having to make difficult decisions, lots of things to be praying about. Of course, over these past weeks, we've been getting back into our building here at St. Field Road and getting a bit together for worship and other small groups and gatherings and planning a bit for things to come, including our church weekend, a weekend of light in these grey months. Some things may be a bit affected, but I hope that a number of things won't be, and you can be praying for that too. But one thing that's been going on a little bit in person, uh, but particularly also online, is the Vibe, our youth club. And on Instagram, as well as lots of fun stuff uh, happening, leaders have been uh, putting up some talks about faith. Tonight, I thought we'd share the latest one from Amy, which is profound, not just for young people, but for all of us, to help us have hope and pray with eyes fixed on Jesus in these days. Here's Amy. Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video in our series of Stories of Hope. Now, it might seem like a bit of a strange place to start, but what's the opposite of hope? Hopelessness. Often hopelessness comes at a point in your life when you feel things just couldn't get any worse. It might be because of difficulties, defeats or disappointments. And while these things are painful, there are times when God uses our suffering to grow and strengthen us. Let's read Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. If you have a Bible, feel free to pause the video and find the passage so we can read along together or make a note of the reference and you can look it up later. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Sometimes following Jesus can take you into the heart of a storm. That's what happened to the disciples. They were simply doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do, and they ended up in one of the worst nights of their lives. The very first verse we read, verse 22, said, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. Did you get that? Jesus made them get into the boat. The disciples were being obedient. They listened to Jesus and followed his words. But then the storm came. Winds pounded their boat and threatened to destroy them. I wonder, have you ever felt blown about or battered in the middle of doing exactly what you believe God told you to do? I know I have, and I wish I could tell you that following Jesus means you'll never have to face any hard times. But I can't, because the Bible says otherwise. The Bible is full of passages about people who face struggles while doing exactly what God wanted them to do. Never confuse trials, hopelessness or struggles in this life with an absence of God 
or his plans for you. He has a purpose for the storms he allows in our lives. And sometimes through these hard times, God reveals himself to us in a way that we would not have known him otherwise. There's no doubt that being in a trial is never fun, but there is hope. You don't have to go through it alone. Jesus is always with you. In the passage where Peter took his eyes off Jesus, that was when he started to sink. Keep your eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. And remember, if life ever makes you feel like you're drowning, your lifeguard walks on water. We have the hope of a bright future. And when your ending is better than your beginning, you'll be able to endure what's in between. And in Jesus, we know our ending is fantastic because it's the start of an eternity spent with him in heaven. In John 14, Jesus comforted his disciples and us by reminding them of their forever future. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. Jesus has gone ahead to prepare a place for you, for you. I don't know about you, but that fills me with hope. Hope of confident expectation that an eternity spent in heaven with God is what is to come for all true followers of Christ. So even though we might have to wait a while before we get to see the brilliance of our eternal home, we shouldn't just sit around and wait to get there. We need to aim to live lives that are fully devoted to God and share the good news of the gospel so that others can also know this hope that is found in Jesus. Jesus is coming back and no one knows when. Are you ready?